Welcome back to another episode of the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. I'm your host, Neil C. Hughes, and today we're going to be taking to the skies with an innovation that has the potential to revolutionise our daily lives. Mana Drone Delivery is the world's first aviation-grade B2B drone delivery service, and they're defining new horizons in lightning-fast suburban deliveries. From flying custom-developed aerospace-grade drones to obtaining the first light UAS operator certificate issued by the IAA and the EASA, Mana is shaping a future where deliveries are affordable, green and safe. So when I heard that currently just outside Dublin, you can open an app, say you want some food delivered and a drone will deliver it directly to your location, I had to find out more. And I'm going to Dublin in September to see my favourite band, The National. So after today's conversation, I want you to stay and connect with me on social channels, just at Neil C. Hughes. And hopefully I will be able to show you some footage of me ordering one of these. But joining us today is Bobby Healy. He's an experienced inventor, technology entrepreneur and founder of Manor. Now, Bobby's remarkable journey from building computer games at the age of 16 to to creating a cutting-edge drone delivery service speaks volumes about his innovative spirit. But today, I want to explore the early days of Manor, their success in Europe, the environmental implications of drone delivery, and their ambitious expansion plans, which include a significant partnership in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. You're going to absolutely love what this one. It's one of the coolest things I've heard about in a long time. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to Dublin, where Bobby is waiting to share his story. And it combines everything from technology, entrepreneurship, healthcare, and the future of delivery services. But enough from me. Let's get Bobby on now. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell everyone listening a little about who you are and what you do? Sure. I'm Bobby Healy, and I am the founder of Mana Drone Delivery. Wow. Sounds incredibly cool. There seems to be a lot to unpack there as well. So I want to take you back in time, find out more about the origin story. So can you walk me through the journey of Mana Drone Delivery? What inspired you to transition from the the realm of computer games and airline technology as well, I think, to establish a drone delivery service? Yeah, no, this is my sixth technology startup. And yeah, you're right. I started writing video games for Nintendo uh, when I was young and built a bunch of travel technology businesses and sold them. And then I was looking for my next project. And around the time I was winding down my previous business, Car Trawler, um, I was, you know, I would take, I'm a tech guy, I'm a programmer. So I love, I love tech and I have a curious mind. And I, like many others, had learned the technology of drones and, and how, I mean, everyone that has a DJI drone, small consumer drone knows how fun they are and, you know, how practical and, you know, off the shelf the tech is and how well it works. And at the same time, when you look inside, what's going on is essentially some of the most state of the art technology that's been commoditized over the, over the years, either through the science of rocketry, uh, the science of space, then the science of mobile phones, squeeze it all down into small. And places like if you think about GPS and you think about accelerometers and gyros and all, all the core tech, lithium ion batteries, all of that tech has been developed, you know, through various space programs and down into commercialization through laptops and then through mobile phones. And, and essentially, your typical drone is all of that plus a bit of propulsion in the form of motors and, and propellers. I was interested in that, learning about that. And then at the same time, um, I live in a suburb of Dublin, about four miles outside of Dublin city centre. And like many people that don't live in city centres, live in the suburbs. Um, It's next to impossible to get a food delivery uh, at my house in a reliable way. If it's raining, the weather's bad. You might be waiting an hour, 45 minutes, or even more for your bag of chips or your, you know, your burger and fries, whatever it is. And... This was a real source of annoyance for me, um, not being able to reliably get delivery. And it, you, for no other reason than to say, how could I solve Bobby Healy's problem of getting a bag of chips on a Friday night? And um, I thought, wouldn't it be fun to build, you know, a little technology stack around these off-the-shelf drones to fly a bag of chips to my house? And that's what I did. And, you know, just to prove the physical viability of it, but, in truth, I was thinking really 
there's an opportunity here. There's autonomous technology that's commoditized off the shelf at a reasonable price. There's an industry of drone deli- of sorry food delivery that's a three hundred billion dollar industry now. That is a huge problem of viability, financial viability. Just it's just really difficult to make road based delivery uh, with humans work, but either in a commercial sense, financially viable, or in a way that keeps customers happy. And so, but to those two things together, the confluence of technology and business problem, and you know, someone like me that's used to starting and growing businesses, it seemed attractive and fun, and fun is key. And then when I dug into the economics of it, and of course, it's much more than just food delivery. We deliver medicine, we deliver, we deliver loads, and, uh, we deliver, you know, everything really. I mean, food is, is key, but there's other things we can deliver. It very quickly looks like a very, very attractive and very large industry that could be solved with robots. And so that was it. That was the start. And uh, five years later, um, you know, I built a small team. I funded the business myself for the first year or so. And then I, I raised a ton of venture capital to get it to where it is. But you know, the, the crux of the idea was Bobby Healy needed a bag of chips. And how could we best solve that? Absolutely love that. What a great story, especially now, you know, five years down the line and you're able to deliver things like very important medicines to people that can't get out of the house, etc. Incredibly cool. But I love how it all started with, how does Bobby get a bag of chips to this house quicker? Yeah, it was called, it was literally called the bag of chips app and it worked, but it, it only worked for me. I literally pressed the button and a bag of chips would arrive. That was the concept. Uh, <laughs> not the world's best business, but, you know, prove the point. Did you ever succeed in getting the bag of chips to you? I'll let you do other things. Yeah, I did. I did, yeah. I never succeeded in in the delivery mechanism on my own. So like what I did was I had a relay to just drop the bag of chips from a height, uh, which worked fine. Um, it was funny, actually, later on in the early days of business, I when we were experimenting with different ways to how to deliver, would you use a parachute system? Would you land to deliver? Would you winch to deliver? Parachute was appealing because it's technically very easy um, to do and kind of fire and forget type system, right? Who cares if your ships land in the tray? Um, and there was me on a giant cherry picker, like a 160 foot cherry picker, buying every single thing on the menu in, in all of the local restaurants and literally dropping it out of the train the GoPro inside and the slow mo camera at the bottom with with measurements on the thing and video to see what's the deliverability of various different products. Um, so, like, it's a wild business. Most of my business has been software businesses. This is the first one where we drop chips from fifty meters. Um, but but there was there's all sorts of fun things like that around this business. And it is described as the world's first aviation grade B two B drone delivery as a service company, as you said. Yeah. It's exactly what it says on the tin. But how does it differ from other drone services? And, and why is your yeah. model, do you think, critical for the future of drone delivery? Well, I think since we coined that phrase, like the, what, what that phrase means is we wanted to be delivery. We, we wanted to be the workhorse. So we wanted to power everybody from the big brand names that we all know down to the small guy that has a little restaurant in, in a suburb that's maybe doing 50 meals a day up to the guys doing a thousand meals a day and we wanted to power the local bakery the local uh, bridge club that want to make you know cakes to fund their next outing to lords or whatever it is we wanted everyone to be able to avail of the infrastructure so therefore we weren't going to be competing with everyone by selling our own products we were going to just give them the delivery infrastructure and that was drone delivery as a service so that makes sense still makes sense actually and but since then others have started to adopt their own models to be the same as us so we've seen um, and i wouldn't call them competitors there's only a handful of serious players in the space and it takes a ton of capital to build a drone delivery business and, and a lot of time so it's not for the it's not a typical startup environment so we really see only three or four companies of importance that are in the space and and some of them I think the best ones, like I'd name particularly Google's drone delivery program, Wing. And really, it's a, it's a really great platform, great team. Obviously, unlimited pockets being Google. We've seen them go from a consumer business, so selling directly to customers, to being a B2B business as well, where 
they've powered DoorDash, they've powered a number of different brands, the little guys, the big guys, and everything in between. So there's definitely an adjustment of strategies across the board to kind of look at what we're doing. And then we've the biggest independent company, Zipline, that are well known drone delivery business that started in Africa delivering medicine. We've seen them of late pivot to be essentially identically to what we started off as, which is a backyard delivery of everything to everyone. So for sure, the big opportunity uh, is in backyard delivery, you know, like literally delivered to everybody's homes of every type of product. And almost all the players now, other, you know, one or two smaller ones are on that, you know, trajectory, I would say. And before you came on the podcast, I was also reading about, uh, the, I think you're licensed by a light UAS operator certificate, and that is a, a huge, significant milestone. But for people listening outside of the industry, can you just elaborate on the importance of this license and how it positions yeah. matter in the in the European market? Yeah. So so there's there's a concept. So if you think of us, we're both an airline and an aircraft manufacturer. So the aircraft manufacturer is purely an engineering certification thing. Build, you design and build your aircraft according to an aerospace process. And you have an aviation regulator that, that certifies essentially that aircraft for safety levels, right? So it's proof that that aircraft is safe. And then the second part, the operating airlines, I think EasyJet or Ryanair, we essentially operate those aircraft. So we provide the service to our uh, cargo delivery service. And that cargo delivery service is has all the safety and governance of an airline, an operating airline, small on-demand airline, and and small as in small aircraft, lightweight aircraft, but big as in we'll be doing millions of flights a day, not the thousands that, that low-cost airlines might do. So we need all the governance, external auditing, and safety kind of high bar of safety. Uh, verified by external sources and that is the aviation regulator and in the in our case it's it's EASA the European A, uh, Aviation Safety Agency that, that regulates all the airlines also regulates us in the UK it would be the the UK Civil Aviation Authority and the US the FAA but they all essentially cast their eyes over your operating manuals your training procedures your your all internal audits and they audit you and we get audited uh, every year and for safety and governance. And that allows us to have a license, which is called the Light UAS Certificate, which allows us to operate the service anywhere we want in Europe. And that's what we have now. And then the other part of that that's that's very interesting is, so, so there's 500 million people in Europe. We can reach about 300 million of them with our current license based on you know high-density suburbs. And we, the other way to think about licensing regulation is there's this, holy grail, I'll call it, of what's called BV loss beyond visual line of sight, which allows us to operate multiple aircraft for one person. It's not actually about the distance you fly. It's about the level of autonomy or automatic nature of the aircraft. So we don't have pilots. We don't have sticks and remote controls. We don't have eyes on the aircraft. We don't need that because of our license. And that means that we can have multiple aircraft operating per person in charge, we call them dispatchers, which means that we can be profitable at the unit level. So in other words, every flight that we fly, we can be profitable and make money. And we're the only ones in Europe that have that level of license. And, and it's really important. And Europe has been great. Like one of the ironies of Europe is, as everyone knows, Europe loves to regulate things. And, and sometimes that can backfire and we end up holding back industry. In this case, the a, European regulator and the individual market regulators like the Irish Aviation Authority or the Swiss Aviation Authority, they've all really, really leaned in and thought well ahead of time what needs to happen to enable drone delivery. And so we have a really strong, clear set of regulations that have been signed into law early this year, which enable this industry to take off, excuse the pun. And, and Europe has led the way. Europe is years ahead of the rest of the world on readiness to license companies like us. So it's a, it's a bit of an irony, but there you go. It suits us really well. And I was also reading Manor's collaboration with the Irish government and the HSE for delivering medication has been described as groundbreaking. So I'm curious, can you expand on that and, and the potential yeah. you see for drone deliveries in, in oh, yeah. sectors like healthcare? 
Yeah, hundred percent. So, I mean, we're we're kind of neutral to the use case, and, and in that we're building something that reliably and safely moves anything from A to B. Right, that's what we're building. And the first time we used the service live, going to real people, was for the first COVID lockdown in Ireland, and we did an agreement with the HSE, which is our version of the NHS, and um, and the Irish government were a strong supporter as well. That allowed us to deliver prescription medicines directly to people that were, well, not just lockdown, but cocooning. So elderly people, elderly vulnerable people living in rural areas. And what we enabled was a video consultation with doctors. The doctor, assuming that they could diagnose an issue by video, would then issue an electronic prescription to the local pharmacy for that patient and we would fly the prescription from the pharmacy directly to the patient's back garden. And we did that live in, in the wild, as we say, in rural Ireland, and it was just so successful. I mean, we had people that were 85 years old using the service to get their regular medicines. We had young people, old people, and everything in between. The entire town that we operated in used the service. And it was a great example of, in this really unusual point in time in all our lives, of technology being really used in a clever and I would say pragmatic way where normal business, uh, oh, I would say normal regulatory rules and, and regulatory scrutiny could be lifted to just emergency help these individuals. And I think it was a great example of government, regulator, health service and, and small technology companies all working together. And I'm really proud actually of, of those results. So whether it's a bag of chips, all important medication, I was reading the average flight time is something like three minutes at speeds of 60 kilometers an hour. Incredibly yeah, impressive. So can you tell me a little bit more about the design and technology behind yeah. these drones that make it all happen? Yeah, I mean, the 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 funny thing is the drone is not the most performant drone. So, you know, you could go to any of your local electrical, you know, retailers and buy a drone that will fly faster and further than our drone. But that, that misses the purpose. Our, our drone can fly in any Irish weather. So I don't know how well your listeners know Ireland, but that means it's literally the stupidest place in the world to build a drone delivery business because it, it rains every single day. Every single day in July, it rained. The wind is horrific. And so our drone is big. It's 1.8 meters motor to motor. So think large flying golden retriever with propellers and the cargo goes inside it. So it will fly extremely reliably and safely over people's heads. As we do now, we've done 150,000 flights, delivery flights, directly over highly densely populated areas safely. And the aircraft will fly, it'll actually fly at an airspeed of about 110 kilometers an hour. So you have to, comb- you have to combine the ground speed and the wind speed to, to, you know, to get the airspeed, which is what you actually have to support. And it'll fly, we tend to, tend to fly at about a three mile radius operation. So it's about a six mile round trip flight. And we think that's the perfect amount to fly. We can fly further, but we, we think better not to. And our average delivery time today is two minutes, 40 seconds. And and that's really cool. I mean, it'll we'll fly a little bit further. So it'll go to about three minutes. But when you can do a three minute flight reliably, as we do, then you could open up new avenues of business that didn't exist before. And, and a classic or a great example of that is the fact that 35% of our deliveries are hot coffee, they're cappuccino and pastries, things like that. And that's because we fly so fast and the delivery process is so, you know, I would say gentle, that coffee delivery is now the number one way to get coffee in the towns that we operate in. And so if you if you apply that functionality and capability um, to anything else. Think about your burgers and fries. Think about whatever it is you might order. It all works now and it's reliable and, and it tastes better than if you had it at a restaurant. And then the other funny capability that we unlock is once people get used to the service and we've, we've customers that have done over 200 deliveries, we've customers that are just really regular users and, and pretty much most of the households in, in the town use us on a regular basis. But you see orders for one onion or a carrot or a head of broccoli. And this is when people are starting to make the dinner or cook the steak and they realize they don't have an onion. They need an onion. And as ridiculous as it sounds, it's now completely normal to order 
an onion for delivery by drone and it lands about four minutes later because it takes us a minute to pick it and load it but it'll land about four minutes later in your back garden and it's crazy and there's potentially you might think that's unnecessary but actually it's a far more granular way to behave and to order and the alternative today is either you do without the onion and you have an imperfect steak or you get in your car and you drive down to the local convenience store and you drive back with a bag of onions not one so there's a lot of food waste there's a lot of time in the road and now the robots can, can get you the onion and so that's what we've enabled with this incredible delivery platform it's just the world's going to change and I was talking to you before we started recording tonight. I'm going to be in Dublin in September for a couple of days, and I'd love to surprise my friend here. So uh, how, yeah, how would I get up yeah. and running? So I'm, I'm in Dublin. Uh, do I need to download an app? Can you just walk me through the process? Of, yeah. I'm going to try and see if I can uh, blow his mind while I'm there. Do it. Do it, yeah, and, and don't tell him what's happening. Um, so you, mean you drive 10 minutes north of Dublin Airport, one of our towns we operate in called Balbriggan, and you download the Manadrone delivery app. And that's it really. All you need to do then is you we if you open the app you'll see a list of stores. We have all the all the local vendors, all the local coffee shops, the local small vendors are on the app and then some big ones like we deal with Coca Cola, with Tesco, but you know, pretty much everyone that sells anything in this town is on our system. And so you choose the vendor you want to buy from, you buy as you normally would a normal shopping basket online, you enter your credit cards, purchase the product and then then we'll ask you to choose the delivery location. We'll do that by taking your phone's location, showing you a detail. It's like not even a satellite view. It's a high res view of where you are. And you drop a pin on the map of where you want us to deliver. And once you drop that, we have a bit of AI that verifies that that's a safe place. And when that happens, then you're going to get a, no you're going to get a notification when the aircraft has been loaded with the cargo notification when it takes off and then you can track it in real time on the app it shows you where the aircraft is and the fun part is trying to figure out which way in the sky to look because you've seen the map but you won't know which way to look and even when i go there i never know which way the aircraft's gone and uh, so, so that's it that's the process it'll arrive wherever you drop the pin it'll hover overhead it'll descend to about 15 meters it'll hover there do one last safety check and then the, the cargo bay doors open we call them the bomb bay doors they open and the and the bag containing whatever you ordered will be lowered gently to the ground right at your feet. It's absolutely spectacular. If you do it at night time, it's even cooler because it's all close encounters. You see flashing lights and and then we light up the area with a big LED spotlight. So there's a circle on the ground where the product's going to be delivered. Um, it's amazing. Oh man, that's added straight to my bucket list. I will be making yeah. that that happen. And of course, drones are often seen as a more environmentally friendly alternative to traditional delivery too. So, is this something that you're passionate about as well? Because I was reading about your operations are green and you have sustainable yeah. measures, etc. So, have you incorporated this into your business model? Yeah, well, there's actually a number of independent surveys uh, have been conducted now on drone delivery around not just us, but but some of our competitors as well. And all of them are kind of in harmony and, and say that drone delivery is more efficient even than an electric bike doing deliveries. And the reason we're more efficient is because ultimately the drone weighs whatever, between cargo about 20 kilos, whereas a bicycle has a human on it and, and weighs going to weigh about 100 kilos, give or take. And so just far more energy to do that delivery. And so when you look at the total energy consumed, and um, we just use far less than any other mode. We're, we're, we're eight times more efficient than an electric car and even more efficient than diesel or petrol cars or motorbikes, you name it. So it's literally the most green way to move things around the roads or not the roads, in, in the air to, to people. And so some of your listeners may be pointing, yeah, but you have to build the aircraft and yeah, but you have to you know, have all these batteries, of course, but the the, the independent analyses of, of this Stack incorporates manufacturing and battery and recycling whole full supply chain and its CO2 generation um, in its calculations. And, and we are by far the most green way to move products around communities. So the question I've got to ask is, where do you go from here? I mean, you've had successful operations in Ireland. You've got an upcoming yeah. trial in Dallas-Fort Worth area, I think. What's next yeah. for you guys? And, and where do you plan to expand? Is it further into Europe and even the US market and other regions too. Yeah, it's it's so exciting. Um, 
you know, from an investment, like we're a small company, be relatively speaking. So we've raised about forty-five million dollars investment, and so that might sound like a lot of money or a little, but when you're building something like this, it's not a lot of money. So we have limited growth until we get to readiness to scale. Is what I would say. So, and we're fine with that. I mean, this industry of aviation is crawl, walk, run. You don't try and and go faster than you're able to. So. Our, our short-term plans are, as you said, we're going to Dallas starting in October. We're going to a huge location in Dublin where we'll do about a thousand deliveries a day in a place called Blanchardstown. And then for 2024, we're open, going to open three European markets. Obviously, Ireland is there and we're going to expand a lot in Ireland. We're going to expand in one other EU country. And the third one, we'd like to be the UK. Uh, the UK is a probably the most important market for us in the European continent. And so we've already applied uh, for an operating license there to conduct a big drone delivery operation. The unfortunate thing, obviously, with Brexit is the the UK doesn't line up anymore with European regulations. So we kind of have to do some reinventing of wheels um, in order to get licenses there. Um, But you have an excellent uh, regulator, one of the best in the world that knows how to do this. There's a strong alignment with the CAA and with what EASA have done and a very, very business friendly government. So we would we would be quite bullish and hopeful that we'll be operating a very large drone delivery operation in the UK next year. And and then we'll we'll just see that out for twelve months where we'll operate about twenty locations across Europe. And when we're happy with that and we're comfortable with the manufacturing process, the scalability of all the different processes that we have. Then we plan to really launch and that every large suburb in Europe will get drone delivery over the coming two or three years. And you mentioned the Dallas-Fort Worth in October, and I was reading about your partnership with Hillwood in that area. It seems to be a, a very strategic approach to expansion. Yeah. Is, is there anything else you can shed on the importance of collaborations and partnerships yeah. and that benefit local communities and yourselves at Manor? Yeah, very much. So um, H- Hillwood is the is the area where we're going to start to bring in, and that falls within the uh, Alliance Texas real estate um, empire, I would call it, uh, which is owned by the Ross Perot, um, you know, family. Um, and so it's a really important strategic partner for us in in the state of Texas that enables us to have a very clear view of who our partners uh, should be in terms of commercial partnerships, who the local businesses are, and, and to build relationships with all of those local businesses quickly. Doing it with a strategic partner as big as as Alliance Texas is very important. It's also worth noting that they, they are a real estate empire, so therefore um, you know, many or most of the initial homes that we'll be delivering to are actually owned by them. And they're the, the kind of quid pro quo of the relationship is where they'll help us with state laws and and with um, you know rollout, just the operational complexity rollout. In exchange, all of their homes that they build and and sell or rent now come you know pre built with drone delivery. This is something that they put on the first page of the brochure for these homes. It's a massive positive advantage. Um, when you're selling a home, to say that it's already got drone delivery. So it's the home of the future for sure. So we kind of look at that US entry as really demonstrating what does the home of the future, what does the suburb of the future look like? And doing that with a company that has that same vision as we do. Wow. Incredibly cool. And I'd love to have a bit of fun with you before I let you go today, because we do have an Amazon wish list uh, with books that I asked guests to recommend. Also got a Spotify playlist for the guests to recommend killer tracks. So all I'm going to ask is, what would you like to leave us with and why today? On a personal level, um, it's a book read. And, and the reason, it, the book is called Shoe Dog um, by Philip Knight, the founder of Nike. And everyone knows Nike, but what they don't know is the chaos of Nike and the, and the, the absolute craziness of that guy's life in building that business, the scrappiness, the madness of the journey in his words. And it's just a, you don't need to be a business person to appreciate this book, although it's great for business people. But if you read that book, you know what my life is like. And this is my sixth startup and every one of them has been an absolute chaotic mess the whole way through. 
crazy, stressful, difficult, unpredictable roller coasters, but joyous as well. Hard to explain. The book encapsulates it all very well. Well, I'll get that added to our Amazon wish list. Maybe a few years' time. Maybe you can promise me that you'll write your own book and we'll get that out there as well. So I've got a few <laughs> stories, right? <laughs> it, it needs censorship, but yes, I will. <laughs> and for anyone listening, just wanting to find out more information about Manadro, the areas you serve, how to get involved, etc. what's the best starting point for our listening? I mean, our website tells the story very well, mana.aero, A-E-R-O, or Twitter is fun. If you follow me on Twitter, you're going to get the news before I even you know, know it. So uh, Twitter is where to follow really what we're doing. And you'll find me, Real Bobby Ely on Twitter or Mana Air on Twitter as well. Those are the ways. Well, I'll be honest, you completely blow my mind today with these drones that fly an altitude of 50 to 80 metres, speed of over 60 kilometres. But the one thing that will stay with me forever, even when I'm in Dublin, I'm going to try this for myself and get it delivered to me, that it all started with Bobby wants to get a bag of chips to his house. I absolutely love it. But thank you for sharing that story with me today. Pleasure, Neil. Thanks for having me. And there we have it, a fascinating flight through the world of manor drone deliveries with Bobby Healy. And our conversation took us from the experimental stages of delivery methods to the invaluable impact of drone deliveries during a global pandemic, the collaboration of the Irish government, the successful trial in, in Dallas-Fort Worth, and the overall vision for an environmentally sustainable future underscores the innovative brilliance of Bobby's venture. But for me... It's all about my next trip to Dublin in September to see the National, and I'm going to try and order something from there. Whether it be a cup of coffee, a bottle of Jack Daniels, whatever it might be, I will be reporting back on that. So stay tuned. But Manor's mission to make suburban deliveries affordable, green and safe isn't just a promise, but a demonstration of technology's potential to improve lives, streamline healthcare and create efficient, environmentally conscious solutions. And the story of Manor is a testament to the creativity, the resilience and strategic thinking that goes into building a business that's poised to redefine how we perceive deliveries. So, Bobby, again, thank you for sharing your insight, stories and incredible journey of Manor with us today. And to everyone listening, don't forget to explore more about Manor and perhaps witness the future where drones become an in integral part of our daily lives. Let me know what you think. If, you, if you're listening in the Dublin area, check it out. Let me know your thoughts. So let me know, techblogwriteroutlook.com, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, just at Neil C. Hughes. We'll keep this conversation going and hopefully you'll join me again tomorrow. But thank you for listening as always. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Oh, 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 oh